Volkswagen just released its second quarter earnings. As investors grapple with previous quarter numbers that were better than expected and an outlook that may be a little bit revised, the company itself is grappling with a future uh, with possible trade restrictions and also uh, new mobility uh, interests like electricity and, of course, uh, self-driving. We're here with the CEO, the new CEO of Volkswagen since April, Herbert Diess. Thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. I want to first ask you about something which isn't directly connected to Volkswagen, but you've been in the auto industry for a long time at Bosch, at BMW, and now at Volkswagen. What does the legacy of Sergio Marchionne, who died tragically last week, mean to you? I was really a very sad message because uh, I knew him as really one of the characters of the industry. He made a difference. He was very unconventional. He had a new approach, a new focus in the industry, so we, we will miss him. What do you think about one of the messages that he was touting a lot? And you spoke today with uh, journalists and analysts about it a little bit as well. That is the consolidation that this auto industry maybe needs to go through. I, you know, it's probably not time of, of uh, huge further consolidation. This is a hugely consolidated industry, so we are uh, well above uh, 10 million of cars, and the economies of scale are really then getting smaller and smaller, and it's probably more on focus on the brand, focus on the customer. And the big challenge for the, for the next decade or so will be the technological change in the industry, the change in the drive trains becoming electric. You mentioned autonomous cars are becoming really relevant, new business models in, uh, stepping in. New competitors, new brands on the horizon no, from either uh, China or the West Coast in the United States. So those are the new challenges. And at least I would say Volkswagen is big enough already for, for coping with those challenges. I saw an interesting comment recently by the EU competition commissioner that not all collaboration is collusion. Wouldn't it make sense for many automakers um, to pool their, for example, certain R&D um, um, expenditures in order to not spend a lot of money on the same thing? We are doing that, and we just announced that we are uh, um, trying to, uh, I'd say, committed to work closer with Ford uh, when it comes to uh, commercial vehicles, uh, 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 compact commercial vehicles. That makes a lot of sense because we are, our setup there is that we are not really having the economies of scale of our direct competitors. A lot of one-time expenditure now is hitting in because uh, you need the delivery vehicles to become electric. Uh, autonomous driving will be relevant also there. Uh, there a lot of uh, one-time expenditure uh, development costs going in, and it makes sense to bundle those activities, and we are trying to uh, come together with Ford, which is a very exciting project for us. Uh, we, we, we have been working uh, together with Ford already uh, some decades ago. Uh, we have good cultural fit, and we are really looking forward to make a good project out of it. And there are other areas where we are uh, also, uh, in, in all history, we always have been working together. Now we share suppliers, we share uh, supplier innovations on a worldwide basis. Uh, we are sorting the batteries, uh, battery cells from the same suppliers. There's a lot of, let's say, shared investment in the industry already going on. So when you have a reputation as someone who keeps costs under control, um, how difficult is that going to be you mentioned today that the six and a half to seven and a half um, percent margins that you're aiming for in the second half, that that kind of achievement would be titanic given all the headwinds. I didn't say titanic, but, <laughs> but I think it will be a challenge. Yeah, it will be a challenge. We're having headwinds. Uh, in our case, Volkswagen, we are really facing in now a few complicated months because of the introduction of WLTP, a new test cycle, which is a big effort for our uh, engineering and development departments. Um, we are hit because uh, our teams really have been working so hard in fixing all the diesel issues and the same team now has to cope with the new uh, homologation uh, cycle uh, covering the full product lineup, the full range, so that will be a big challenge for us. We think we can, we can cope it, uh, with it and uh, we, we, we will have the same situation probably next year and the year after, we will be better then. But we have to, uh, yeah, it, it will be a big effort for us. By the way, you studied uh, engineering, right, at the Folk, uh, at the um, Technische Schule in München. Yeah. Uh, 
I can't remember the German uh, Ausdruck for that, but Technische Universität München. Yeah. Exactly. So, are there enough um, students like you these days? Are there, is there a shortage of engineers for what you need to achieve? I think Germany is probably one of the areas where we have a very sound technical education, very good technical universities uh, all over Germany. Uh, meanwhile, China is producing more uh, technical expertise and, and engineers than uh, Germany, but I think we are well set up when it comes to electronics design, uh, also software engineers. and. Uh, uh, this is probably one of the infrastructural uh, advantages of Germany to have really a solid and, and high-level uh, technical education. Let's talk quickly about trade. Um, a lot of car makers have been mentioning this as a, a real issue, especially in the U.S. It's led to profit warnings. Are you hopeful that we can come to some sort of agreement between the U.S. and the EU, for, first off? I'm very happy about the last signal that we are receiving between the uh, negotiation parties, so I really would hope so, because you know our industry is really prone to those changes. Uh, uh, we would suffer a lot because our investments normally are for 40 years to, to set up car plants. They have to uh, be productive for, for 30, 40 years and to adopt to new trade policies, uh, to adopt to a new manufacturing footprint for us is hugely costly. Uh, so I would really be very happy if uh, if uh, trade and tariffs could be on the, could remain on the same level, and I'm really thankful that uh, both negotiation parties are really uh, looking for a solution now. But there are, there are other countries though in which trade is also a huge barrier. China, for example, are you thinking about moving more production to? local areas, for example, producing more in China. I know you have a, I've been to your Volkswagen factory in Chattanooga, but could you, for example, see um, making Porsches or Audis in the U.S. as well? We are currently wrapping up our production in Chattanooga now with the new big SUV, uh, big SUV Atlas uh, being in production now for over a year or so and having huge market success. Uh, there will be a second model being launched uh, shortly, uh, a five-seater SUV uh, same size, and we are considering more investment to go into Ch Chattanooga and really uh, ramping up our uh, Chattanooga facilities. Uh, we are mostly uh, localized in most of the region, so we have huge production facilities in Latin America. In China, we are really big. We have plants in South Africa, so all over the planet. Uh, and we are uh, considering also increasing our production capacity in the United States. Could you see the, some of those premium or super premium brands being produced? Currently, we have no plan, but I think it's also as we are growing in the market, Audi is hugely successful. There will be, uh, let's say, a, a step in time when, when it just makes sense to produce also cars in America. Speaking of that, uh, I've heard from analysts at Bloomberg Intelligence, but also Art Ellinghorst at ISI, that you know Porsche as a standalone uh, company would be worth more than the market cap of Volkswagen, or indeed, if it were coupled with Lamborghini, um, definitely more. Have you thought about a way to monetize these incredibly valuable brands inside the Volkswagen I umbrella? don't share that view because that's, uh, let's say, really superficial because if you look at the, at the Porsche product portfolio, it's heavily based on platforms which are either uh, uh, or most of them are really Audi developed, so it's it's big part of SUVs, uh, which is Porsche's now uh, uh, sales uh, um, volume worldwide. So Porsche as a standalone company, I think, would not be as successful and profitable as they are within the group. You are, however, evaluating um, the possibility of uh, exiting some of the businesses you're in, the trucking business, the uh, the, uh, the parts business, possibly even the motorcycle business. Yeah, you know, the synergies in the truck business between trucks and cars is not really big, and giving them more independence uh, might uh, uh, improve their uh, potential to move in the markets, to be faster, to be more dedicated. So that makes a lot of sense. But synergies in the car industry are quite significant, also between the volume and premium brands. For instance, Audi is sharing uh, probably four, 400 to 500,000 vehicles on Volkswagen's platforms. Uh, Volkswagen is producing Porsches and Audis in, in Volkswagen's plant, our most competitive plant here in Europe. Uh, for instance, is really dedicated to uh, to our um, 
for, uh, to our Porsche and, uh, and Audi brands. So there's a lot of synergies which you would lose if you just would cut off one brand and, and uh, make it independent. Let me finally ask you about uh, Ducati, full disclosure. It's a team I root for and a brand that's near and dear to my heart. What do you think about the possibility of continued work with, with this Italian company? I mean, they put out a naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine that makes 215 horsepower. That's got to be worth something, and, and the brand value of Ducati has to be incredibly important to you as well. Yeah, Ducati, I like, you know, I'm, my background is also motorbikes. I, I used to be in charge for the BMW motorbike division for quite some years. I like sporty bikes. Uh, Ducati is probably the most valuable motorcycle brand in the world. I think they have a very good track record. They are growing. Uh, but we also we have to look which is the best ownership for Ducati and uh, either we find really gross potential within the group uh, because synergies between bikes and cars are not huge. They're probably as little as between trucks and cars. So either we find a way forward for Ducati which provides some growth, some probably additional brands or so, uh, or we have to look for new ownerships. I wouldn't uh, uh, exclude that.